there. I'm the director of training here at Procolor Coffee. Uh, we're based in downtown Toronto. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, literally steps away from Lansdale Station. So come by and give us a visit, follow us on Instagram, all that fun stuff. Uh, today I have the honor and privilege, as I do every year, to help out with Zuccarini, uh, specifically the booth and specifically the latte art workshops. So real quick about the propeller, what we're doing here is we are always sourcing direct trade, high quality coffee. Um, we're always blending uh, certain coffees to taste a certain way, number one. So we have a staple lineup of coffees and we also have a rotating cast of single origin coffees that will source seasonally. Uh, we always roast to like a medium. The furthest we'll take it is a medium dark and the reason is so we can caramelize all those natural sugars in the coffee. So uh, all of our coffees will be uh, nice, sweet, uh, super rich on the palate. Uh, some acid, but not too much. Uh, not too many dark flavors, so like no, not so much roasty or smoky or ashy or anything like that. Uh, so we can taste the natural uh, terroir and qualities of the coffee. Uh, so that being said, before I hop into it, uh, again, I just want to thank Zuccarini. I also want to thank uh, Dairy Farmers of Ontario for sponsoring the workshop today. Thank you so much for producing that dairy. So today we're going to be talking about uh, super, super quickly because it's a critical component, uh, dialing in your espresso and kind of what you're looking for, what you're not looking for for body uh, in terms of latte art. And then obviously we're going to be talking about latte art. So we'll talk about uh, some technique, uh, what we're looking for, what we're not looking for when we're steaming the milk. Uh, what kind of texture we're looking for, uh, whether it's like a latte or a flat white or a cappuccino. Uh, and again, kind of like how to manipulate the milk. Um, we'll talk a bit about temperature and obviously we'll talk about the designs themselves, how to build some basic designs. And if we have time at the end, uh, we can cover a couple of more, uh, more advanced, like a bit more structured designs. And I'm going to leave about five or 10 minutes at the end of our session for any questions or comments or concerns. So I definitely want to hear them. I will allocate some time at the end. So uh, please feel free to, again, drop a message in the chat or hop off of mute. Uh, I'm just going to be facing the machine. I do have my earphones on and my microphone as well. So even if I'm kind of in the middle of uh, making my shot or anything like that, I'll be more than happy to talk. So I'm just going to flip my camera over and we'll get into it. And sorry, uh, actually, I'll just briefly talk about the equipment that I have back here because you have a pretty good view. Uh, these are the Mythos Grinder. Uh, awesome, super, super consistent. Hands down my favorite grinder in the industry. Uh, it literally just does its job <laughs> forever so consistently. And you can uh, use it back to back, shot to shot. The grind settings are not going to change. Uh, it is so easy to work with and a huge pleasure. Uh, likewise, with I have here the Victoria Arduino Black Eagle. Uh, we call it the all black matte black Black Eagle. Uh, again, beautiful top of the line. Uh, I love using it. Uh, it is so intuitive and user friendly. Uh, and I'll kind of talk about using this as I'm pulling my shots here, but let's hop into it. So I'm still here, just off screen. And off screen, I'm going to start preparing my shots. So like I mentioned, you want something a bit more uh, rich and syrupy uh, to get a high contrast uh, latte art base. Typically, when you're dialing in your espresso, you're looking for a balance of uh, sweet components, uh, literally caramelized sugar flavors, uh, and some natural acids and some tannins. And based on how those are balanced in your cup, uh, that's how you're going to build your espresso recipe. You just want your puck to look like that once you're done. Uh, no cracks or channels or clumps or anything like that, just nice and even. Uh, I've already tamped this with my body weight perpendicular to the counter. I'm just going to rinse my group head. Actually, I'll just screen over here. 
I always work my group head. And I'm just going to start my shot. I have it programmed for a one to two ratio of uh, grind to liquid espresso. So I'm kind of just going to let it do its thing and run its course. In the meantime, off screen here, I'm just going to prepare some milk. Uh, the milk we're using today is from Sheldon Creek. It is so naturally sweet and creamy. It's a uh, cream top milk, and it pairs so well with that. Especially espresso, I find. Uh, it takes it from being just straight espresso to more of like a kind of, uh, think about like a cream-based pastry type flavor. Uh, it is unreal. So my espresso is done. Sorry, there we go. Uh, so as you can see, it's nice syrupy, uh, kind of coating the sides of the cup, which I'm looking for. You don't want it to be too syrupy in the cup. Uh, and you also don't want it to be too watery, so this is exactly where I want it. So for my milk, I always purge my wand before and after, because honestly, it's not going to break up. You want to avoid that. So literally, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and angle it here, so you can kind of go on. So pretty much what I'm doing from here is I'm going to just barely submerged the tip of my wand, uh, right past the surface of the drink. I'm going to start my steam, and it's going to start making uh, almost like a kissing noise. And that sound is actually steam being introduced to the milk and creating uh, tiny bubbles that we call microphone. Uh, that's what gives drinks like black whites, lattes, cappuccinos, etc., their um, milk texture, or sorry, their milk feel. Uh, and most of the time, we're going to uh actually be blending all the types so the stretching like creating that microphone we do for like a couple of seconds right at the beginning but 99 percent of the time we're actually going to be focusing on getting a whirlpool motion in our picture because that's actually going to blend all of the microphone uh that we made and on top of that it's going to heat your milk evenly we're looking for about 140 degrees fahrenheit um that's where the lactose actually caramelizes and that's going to be the sweetest point of milk. Uh, it's a bit cooler than some people expect, but uh, again, it's going to give your drink that balance and that mouthfeel that you're looking for. Uh, so I'm just going to go for it. That's a pretty long explanation for something that happened in the second. So I'll try and talk us through it. So I'll just start my steam. That's my kitchen sound. That's my kitchen sound. And now I'm just work pulling it. So from here, uh, as you can see, it's quite milky, or rather, it obviously it's milky. It is quite creamy. Uh, it has the texture of wet paint and it's glistening. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. I don't want any big bubbles or anything like that in my milk. Here. Bear, uh, Bear, this is Charlie. Yeah, yeah you, you seem kind of muffled. I, I can't hear you very well. Oh, sorry about that. How are we now? Yeah, okay, that's better. Yep. Okay, great. Sorry about that. So, from here, just going to pour from high and really gently until I'm about halfway like that, and then I'll get very close. And that's where you can start to make your design right at the top. Lift and cut through. And that is a tulip. This is one of the basic designs that we're going to be talking about. Gorgeous. Thank you. So the reason that I poured in two different stages like that is because uh, when you start pouring from high, you get a narrow stream. It sinks right past the surface of the milk, uh, and it doesn't disrupt anything that's going on on the top, including the crema. Uh, once you're about halfway, you can get really close uh, and literally try and touch the uh, surface of your drink. Usually, I get some coffee over here. Today, I didn't. But what happens is when you get close, that's when you can start to create your design and really gently lay that microphone on top of the surface of your drink. And uh, 
that's where you start to get all of this kind of bright white art instead of uh, the darker brown around the contrast. Uh, so I'm going to do one more basic shape, at least. I'll do a couple more if time is permitting, and we'll talk about what's going on over there. So a tulip, I would consider like not your first piece of latte art. It takes a bit of practice. It's actually an evolved form of the heart, which is one blob, and you lift and cut through. But as you can see, I made one, two, three, and then lift and cut through. Uh, so I'll put a hold on that for now. We're going to be talking about the rosetta next. So typically, a heart shape is your first piece of latte art. Uh, but actually, when I started, uh, the first piece of latte art that I could figure out was a rosetta. It's uh, pretty it's deceptively simple, actually. I'm just working on my side here off screen. All right, my shot's coming up. I'm going to prepare my milk off screen as well. Aaron, what's the uh, difference with almond milk? Is, is, there, um, is, is there a little more, um, uh, you know, to get a nice foam on almond milk? Uh, I would say the difference with non-dairy milk is uh, the reason dairy milk is so good to uh, for latte art with is it actually has a balance of proteins, fats, and sugars that makes it quite stable. Uh, but the thing about milk alternatives is uh, it's actually quite rare for them to naturally have such a balance. Uh, so if you're getting something off the shelf at your grocery store, this are it's actually not going to perform the way you want it. Uh, my recommendation would be, number one, get a barista series milk. They typically put uh, an emulsifier like uh, canola oil in there. Uh, and number two, I recommend shaking it really hard to make sure it's uh, nice and emulsified before you uh, start to steam your drink. OK, thank you. No problem. So oh this is God, the Thank you. Um, so the difference with the Rosetta is, uh, when I'm pouring, instead of making, uh, one blob anyway, uh, I actually pour inward. I go back and forth like so to kind of get my leafy action. And at the very top, I'll hold it for one second, lift and cut. And, uh, that's a pretty basic Rosetta. Mine's a bit looser than you typically see. So you get wider lines. Um, but usually when you see this pattern, there are finer lines, uh, finer quote unquote leaves and all that fun stuff. Um, I do have time for one more. So I talked about doing a little bit more of an advanced piece to kind of show how all these things fit together. So I'm just gonna do a basic swan, which is a combination of uh, three different patterns. Uh, you start with the rosetta for the wing number one. Uh, number two, you kind of uh, swoop down for its little neck. And number three, you make a small heart at the top for its face. And between those three movements, which are all movements that we uh, actually covered for in these guys, we'll be able to pour us one. So just preparing my milk off screen here. My shot is up, and I'm just going to quickly prepare the milk, give it a purge, wipe it down, kiss it down, kiss it down, and I'm just focusing on what pulling it. 
until it's almost too hot to touch. Feel free to use a milk thermometer if you want, um, but I always recommend going by hand because you don't always have the milk thermometer handy, but you always have your hands handy. And from here, I'm going to make my base. So pour from high, just like so. I'm going to go across the side, just like so. Take a little rosetta, lift, cut, make this little body, and a heart for the face. It's, a, it's not my cleanest example, but you can see that. So OK, awesome. Success. So number one, number two, and we also have a heart. Those three I would consider the foundational movements. And right here is actually, I would consider like a basic advanced movement. Uh, once you start to master the tulip, the rosetta, and the heart, uh, that's when you can start to move on to things like the swan because you understand uh, how much space you need in the cup, uh, how the timing works out, uh, you understand your own technique. So as with all things in life, focus on the fundamentals first and then you can start experimenting and putting them together to uh, start making more detailed art. That is it from me for the structured workshop. I'm uh, does anyone have any questions or comments or concerns? Hey, Bear, what's yeah. what's what's the uh, the the shape of the spout on the steaming pitcher? Does that make a difference, or I would say it does make a difference. So today I'm using. Sorry, I'm just pulling a picture over here. Uh, so today I'm using a bit more of a. Uh, rounded spout. Uh, it's not super, super rounded, but it is quite wide and quite round. Are you uh, more successful with like a pointed, a pointy one, a sharp one? Or I, uh, I think it depends on the design, to be honest. So I do typically, sorry, I'm just reaching off screen here because I have my personal picture, which I do prefer. Um, yeah, it's sharper, it seems. It's got a, uh, different, yeah. a different spout on the very different tip. Very different tip, very different spout. So as you can see, it's uh, uh, considerably more angular, mm. uh, quite sharp. Uh, I've seen even sharper pitchers that have like a 90 degree angle for the spout. Yeah. Uh, but I find those, uh, I would use the word punishing. Uh, like you can get very, very fine details in your latte art, but even the slightest slip of your hand, uh, you kind of like make a mistake. Um, I find this far more practical. Uh, this is what I'll use in uh, competition. Uh, so it's sharp, but not too sharp. Um, you do have some margin for error, uh, but you can still get those fine details in there and get some really uh, crisp and fine lines. The picture that I'm using today, whoops, with this slightly wider and more round uh, spout. Oh yeah. Uh, I would say it's better for wider designs, or it. Think about the difference between a wide paintbrush versus a uh, pencil. I would consider that the difference between a sharper spout and a wider spout. Right. But the sharper spout is definitely my preference, but not too sharp. Maybe yeah. really sharp. OK, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions from the floor? What about milk temperature? Does that make a difference? I would say milk temperature does make a difference. Um, typically, if you're going to a, uh, I guess I would call it more of a chain, um, you start to get milk that's like 160, 170 degrees Fahrenheit, or uh, even uh, scalded, to be honest. Um, the difference there is milk actually has lactose in it, which is naturally sweet. A uh, tiny bit tangy, but mostly sweet. And what happens is when you take the milk past a uh, certain point, uh, you start to burn off all that lactose, and it starts to taste uh, almost acrid and bitter. 
Uh, yeah, I can I can smell it sometimes if you steam it too long. It's got a oh, absolutely. Uh, not even caramelized. It's almost burnt. Definitely burnt. Uh, almost like the difference between like caramel syrup and like burnt caramel syrup. That's like sticking <laughs> yeah. the pan yeah. type of thing. Like burning toffee or something. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I usually recommend uh, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's where the lactose just starts to caramelize. That's where the milk is also its most uh, structurally stable. So I find that if you steam a drink to that temperature and you have your perfect texture, you can, uh, obviously you don't want to do this, but uh, it, it'll keep its structure for at least an hour or two. Uh, if it's sitting there on the counter, uh, I wouldn't serve it to a customer necessarily, but just uh, just in terms of quality and how well the milk is actually structured. Uh, that's one of the two reasons. And the second reason is once you start to really caramelize that lactose, uh, it's a complete game changer. Uh, I went from having a latte with like two sugars at like my first coffee job to uh, I really like cortados, which is like one part espresso, one part steamed milk. Uh, and you get a lot of that natural sweetness, uh, almost like a condensed milk type sweetness from that uh, 140 tamp milk uh, with the natural sweetness of the espresso. So it's uh, almost like having dessert during your work day. Thank you, Ed. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, latte related, coffee related, coffee unrelated? Yeah, I think I'm good, Bear. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We're good too, thanks. Awesome. Next time we're in Toronto, we'll drop in and see you. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Great. Everyone, thank you so much. If you do have any other questions or comments, uh, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email directly. I'm Bear, B-E-A-R, at propellercoffee.com. Uh, any wholesale inquiries, uh, equipment questions, coffee questions, I'll be more than happy to help out. And we're also open here at the cafe Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, for curbside shopping and what we call curbside cafe. So swing by. Say hello, have a drink, grab some delicious beans, and uh, have an excellent time. Uh, and please enjoy the rest Thank of the show. Thanks so much, Bear. Thank you.